Hey there guys, this is Ryo69501 and welcome to my channel. Uh, well, uh, the comic that I'm going to display is Adventures of Superman, issue number 452. 452. Brain Awesome cover. Check this out. Uh, I'll go over here. Okay, stay. Well, uh, this video is where I'm going to give you my thoughts of future end from issue number 5 up to issue number 8. Here's 6, here's 7, <clears throat> and here's number 8. Bad. You know, I mean, I was thinking to do this like a weekly thing, but like I'm doing with, uh, with Superman Doom. But I decide just uh, at least on this one I'm gonna do it every four issue I will make a video giving you my thoughts it's kind of like yeah one one video every four weeks so it's a lot easier plus I can get more into the story in the one by one because some sometimes there's an issue that it has no story at all so it's kind of confusing so for me doing it this way is a lot better. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, let's get started. Issue number five of New Fifty Two Future. And well, as you be, as you remember my last video, it was when uh, finally Mister Terrific he's gonna launch his iPod. It's kind of like a cell phone. Think of it of the most fancy iPod today, just 20 times better, 20 times over, better than the one, that the best one there is now, in the future, at least on the comic book world. So they finally launch, and then we see Grifter, he's on the hospital, paralyzed, saying, so why you shoot me, why didn't you kill me? I said, well, I didn't need, I mean, I shoot you because I need you. And you were lucky that I shoot, that I shoot you where, where I shoot you, just to leave you paralyzed, paralyzed, so that way you won't run away. <laughs> That's kind of weird. So, although they can, they, although they can make Rifter walk again, so, so they are talking, saying, "Look, I need you because they need Rifter." Because he had the power to see aliens. Remember this eighty TV show uh, with this wrestler uh, that he wore like a pair of sunglasses, so he can tell which which was him and the other one were not, and they were aliens. Forgot the name of that. I don't know if it was, it was a TV show or a movie. No, it was a movie. I forgot the name of the movie. But he wore sunglasses, and he can tell the different. He can tell who's human and who was any disguised as a human. Well, same thing with Rifter. So then from there we go to the island and we see that Omac is chasing uh, a woman here. Which I have to say that I like the art. And the colors here are very rich. I really like it. I really like it. Look at that. So, although it's done with, by Kit, uh, Kit Giffen. So we see after the after she kills two Omax security guards, uh, we see that the little girl what uh, what as Frankenstein called her father. You know, it's, it, this is yeah. I hate this lady. Just this one law over here. You know, this little girl. She's a teenager. She, she has a loud mouth. She's a smart ass. She thinks she knows everything. And she believed that she can do whatever she wants and nobody can do nothing about it. Just, just one of those type of teenagers that you just feel like just you do, that you just want to slap them. Real hard. That's the type of teenager this uh, girl is. Kind of pain in the ass. So, finally, the confrontation between Firestorm and the the two friends inside of 
Firestone, they finally separate and they decide to split up. I said, well, can I deal with you? Oh, well, if you're gonna deal with me, so I am not gonna deal with you. Because they are two different humans. Like, two humans that they have to connect so to become Firestone. And they can change who's gonna control Firestone. But the other one's still alive in Firestone conscience. So, because they don't like each other. That much. So they they split up. One of them go to back to the university, and he bumped to with his professor. Say, look, I finally make this work. And then from there we move to the middle of a cornfield where we see Constantine. So issue number seven, actually issue number five, it was more as a setup. It was to come later. So issue number six. Check this out. Issue, issue number six, well, we are back to the city where we see the bad guys with plastic planning to break in into the building of Mr. Terrific. That plan. While, while all that plan is going on, we see like a bum walking around and just ear grabbing, you know, checking things out. Well, that guy happens to be Batman from the future. So Mr. Tafrika figure out who's that Batman on the future is. Then from there we, we, we go to the <coughs> to the to the place of Dr. Palmer where he's working on this on the spaceship. You see, Stonewatch, the old day in outer space. Like, obviously. Something happens to me. So nobody knows if somebody's alive or dead, they just want to find out how, when, or what killed them, if they're all dead. So Dr. Palmer, with, the, uh, with, with father, and Artemis, and Frankenstein, they're going to take this spaceship to go to outer space. So instead to go as a normal way, they're gonna cut corners, they're gonna that, they're gonna take a shortcut. Through the Phantom Zone. But for them to go through the Phantom Zone and not and not get detected by whatever or whoever are into the Phantom Zone. So he designed a spaceship where that spaceship will shrink into the size of a uh, the size of my microscopic size, including everybody's inside of the spaceship. So they can go to the phantom zone and be undetected all the way, which makes sense. So, yeah, why not? So they built the ship. Everything's ready to launch. At day launch, <coughs> excuse me. At day launch, while they are coming in through the phantom zone, we see a whole bunch of entities, people from uh, Krypton creatures, which half of which half of them, I don't know who they are, but. Still, but something happens, like always. <laughs> so there's some malfunction, and the spaceship, the spaceship begin to take to grow to the normal size. So Artemis and Frankenstein they decide to get off the, the ship and fight all the creatures. They are into the Phantom Zone, but they nobody realized that one of them would be Black Adam. Check this out over here. So now we have a showdown between. Frankenstein and Black Adam. That's awesome. So from there we go back to her. We are on this part where this guy, uh, where uh, Red Robin works. Uh, so he has a conversation with Louis Lane because Louis Lane is after the story of Red Robin. Because everybody knows that Red Robin died with the Teen Titans in the, in the war five years in the future. So, the guy said, look, I am not Red Robin. You are mistaken. Everybody knows that he died. But Louis Lane, as we know her, she said, well, no, you are not dead. So, they are talking, talking, talking. And the thing is that somebody's following Louis Lane. And they just just right in the mouth, I mean, just right in the moment when this guy 
gonna grab Louis Lane, guess who show up? Well, here it is. He show up Superman with Cobra Commander mask right here. Which I don't know why Superman's wearing a mask. So I assume or he either died on that war or that's just a containment suit. Maybe he's pure energy. I don't know. Why he wearing a mask? I have no idea. But looks like Cobra Commander. It looks cool though. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. So Superman shows up. Try to tell the guy whatever you're thinking, do not do it. Louis name is off limit. And the guy said, okay, fine. So he flew away. That, that's it. It was a good issue. Issue number seven. Uh, check this out. Well, here we go that we go as the story start in space, in the Phantom Zone. So it's a big showdown between Frankenstein and Black Adam. Now, the thing is, that we know that Black Adam is as strong as Shazam, which is almost the same power level as Superman. And here, Frankenstein, he actually kicks Black Adam's ass. I know, but he actually did it. So the thing is that Black Adam is trying to use his power like Shazam, so that way Frankenstein get hit, get hit by a lightning. The thing is that Black Adam didn't know that, well, that the lightning gave him more power and more life to Frankenstein. So Frankenstein managed to punch the lights out of Black Adam. I mean, I'm talking literally kick his ass. So finally they escape the Phantom Zone. Great. Everything's all. Okay. The thing is that once they are, that they reach out of space, they find the ship of Stormwatch. The thing is that everybody was, everybody inside that ship is dead, including Hawkeye. You go like, okay, everybody's dead. Okay, I'm still wondering about that. So from there, we go back to her. You see, that's the thing about future. You go to one place, to the other, out of space, back to Earth, we go here, we go there, it's like all over the place. So we see Louis Lane still dealing with the, with the secret box that she got. And she's talking to a friend of, which happened to be the waitress of Red Robin in the bar. Or the, what's the name, the, the name of the bar? I forgot. Anyway, so they are talking and this and that and they walk away. They don't, uh, because uh, the waitress father used to be a weapon dealer in the war. So she has that mark. From her, from her father's past, so she, she's kind of carrying all that burden on her. She got all that on her back. So from there we go to New York City, <clears throat> where we see that this this rope is training and talking about. Rifter. I said, what's the, what's the big deal about Rifter? The only thing he does, he just can't look. He can tell the difference between aliens and humans. And he just goes. That's about it. What's so, what's so great about him? So, they don't like each other. So, the thing about uh, Rifter is that they want him to work for them because of, about, about something that is coming, uh, which we don't know what it is yet. But the little girl, she's always on his back. I mean, she's a pain in the ass. So then from there we go back to the part where, remember when, uh, when supposedly Red Robin is acting like a bum and Mr. Terrific, he figure out who's who, well, the thing is that while they are talking, and 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 the Red Robin disguised as a bomb, he get discovered by Mr. Terrific. So we have a big show between Mr. Terrific and the Batman of the future. What's a show fight? So the thing is that Batman, after he punched Mr. Terrific lights out, he decides to fly away. 
The thing is that he left behind the android that happened on issue, issue number one. Remember that? Well, and Mr. Terrific says, well, what, will you, what do we have here? And that, was, and that was the end of it. So the, the fight it wasn't that, that of, a big, of a big deal. Basically, it was more Batman getting away from Mr. Terrific. So here we are, issue number eight. Check out this cover. Awesome. So, uh, we still talk about Destro, talking about the little girl that she's a pain in the ass, and about Rifter. Rifter doesn't like kids, and the kids, you know, that little girl doesn't like Rifter. Uh, we go back to Louis Lane, she's still figuring out about the numbers of the, of the piece of paper that she got on the box. She doesn't know if it's, if it's a map, a map of... Let's see, uh, what's the, the term that they use? Uh, coordinates. So whatever it is, she has, she has to figure out what those numbers stand for. Then from there, we go to, uh, to the university, where the guy, the friend, uh, the other guy from Forest Snow, which I forgot his name, uh, they're working on this of this new technology. The thing is that this new technology technology that they're working is from Justice League America. Space Station is their transporter. Because they think that they say that it's not fair that the superheroes will have all this advanced technology just for themselves. So he believes that if they have a lot of technology that will help humankind, why we should not have it and use it? But as we know that, that we got good humans and bad humans, so that's why the Justice League of America keep all those high tech in the space station. But obviously here, there is no more Justice League, as far as I can tell. So the thing is that they decide to make an experiment and did not work out. Everything exploded. I mean, the machine just burned out. So the doctor walks away, and then suddenly, Superman, with the Cobra Commander mask, shows up and starts to talk to <coughs> to uh, what's his name? I think he's uh, the other guy with the fire. I forgot his name. Anyway, the thing is the that Superman tell him, "Look, we need Firestorm," and then says, "Look." Him and I, we split up. We don't like each other. We cannot stand to each other. He has one way of, of thinking and doing things. I have my way of doing and thinking. Because this guy, he's still in college. He's a scientist. He wants to have a life. He wants to have a future. But the other half of Firestorm, he's just a womanizer. All, well, all he wants to do is just have fun, 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 fun. And because of that fun, 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 and being a womanizer, that's why Green Arrow died on issue number one, on issue number one, from this scene. Because Green Arrow crossed, this, crossed Firestorm. So while Green Arrow was fighting, he sent a message to Firestorm. But Firestorm did not pick it up, because the other half, he was having fun with a woman. So while the other guy is, why the other half, he was searching for him. And that's why once that they got together and turned into Firestorm and went to find Renato, by the time they got there, Renato was dead. So that's why they split up. Way of thinking. I mean, one, one half of it wants to be responsible, the other one is just plain crazy. So Superman is talking to him. He said, Look, we need Firestorm. I said, Look, forget it. I am not going to become Firestorm because the other guy, he's an idiot. And Superman tells him, yeah, I noticed, I, I noticed that you're working with some new technology. And the way I see it, it's a transporter from Justice League, right? They say, well, yeah, but it burned out. So the way that Superman implies is that the machine burned out with the help of Superman. Somebody. So the machine was going to work. But I believe that somebody of the superhero kind of like tempered with the machine so that way they would not be able to work the machine. Okay, then from there we go to outer space. Finally, Dr. Palmer 
Frankenstein, Artemis, and the little brat, they finally find Stonewatch. They all float in outer space, they all dead. They pick up all the bodies. Now, remember while before this, Frankenstein he lost he lost one arm. Actually. Black Adam is the one who ripped his arm off. So we have Frankenstein with no arm. Miss, uh, missing one arm. So he sees Hotman's dead body. He starts thinking, hmm, I don't know what should do. Then he asks Artemis, look, can I have your sword please? I say, sure. And what it does that is Dr. Parmen, he chopped Hotman arm. That's so awesome. Because he wants to use Hotman's arm and what you put it on Frankenstein. So now we're gonna have Frankenstein with Hawkman with one arm or from Hawkman. Because Hawkman, Hawkman is already dead, so I guess he doesn't need it. <laughs> so he just chopped his arm and well, he will flip. Don't worry about it. Everybody is surprised, like, what the hell are you doing? Don't worry about it. The arm will fit to Mr. Frankenstein. So it, it will work. Oh, don't worry about it. He needs, a, he needs an arm, so relax. So the thing is that from there we move to Back to her. Kind of like a, like in a cave somewhere in the Amazonian jungle. And then some android shows up and start killing everybody. And then from there we see Rifter. I mean, Constantine. That he just woke up. And his girlfriend just woke up from a dream. Actually, a nightmare. And says, yes, something's coming. And that was the end of issue number eight. Well, I have to say that, you know, this series is good to read. If you, if you buy four issues and read it one after the other, or at least weekly, uh, it's not bad. It's just sometimes you might get lost in the story. I mean, it's not perfect. But I have to say it's a lot better than Batman and Dirt. In a way. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's a little bit well dark than Batman and Uh So, I have to say that from issue number 7 to issue number 8, it was a fun story. Although issue number 6 was kind of like weird. I mean, issue number 5 was kind of like a setup for the, for, for the, for the three issues. Now, one thing I noticed that, that this four issue was basically more about Frankenstein. Frankenstein was shining there. And I'm, I'm happy to see Superman, uh, although, like I said before, I do not know why Superman is wearing Cobra Commander mask. So I don't know why. But I guess we're going to find out later in the story. So overall, from issue number 6, 5, to issue number 8, it was good. Up and down, yes. It was perfect, no. Overall, it was good. 4 out of 5. So, I'll give it 4 out of 5. Well, guys, this is it. I hope that you like this video. Till later. Bye.